the emotional toll that it takes on a person is immense. I'm lucky that I have insurance. If I didn't, I would be broke or dead by now. It definitely affects me pretty much head to toe. Pain is the biggest thing. My name is Mara Claxine, and I have a genetic connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Ehlers-Danlos affects everything in your body that is associated with collagen. So skin, muscles, organs, eyeballs, everything. Just everything is made of collagen, pretty much, so this is kind of affects your whole body. So I've been feeling symptoms of Ehlers Danlos since I was really little. Most of it was pain and some of it was autonomic, like sweating and panic and low blood pressure, high heart rate, but it gets a lot worse in your mid-20s and that's when things kind of... You wake up and you lay in bed for a while and then you take your various medications or herbal supplements, and then you lay in bed some more until your muscles and joints kind of unfreeze because when you're sleeping, they lock up a lot. Um, they also oftentimes will sublux or dislocate in your sleep, so you have to kind of take care of that before you can get out of bed. And then um, pretty much after that, the day is just about trying to keep your pain low enough to function. So there's a saying that medical students learn in medical school, um, when you hear hoofbeats think horses, not zebras. Basically, you know, the simplest option is the best option. And so in the Ehlers-Danlos community, they call us zebras because we're sort of like the exception to that rule. Before I had the diagnosis, I would just go into the doctor and say, you know, this hurts or everything hurts or something's wrong or what's going on or help me and they would just say, oh, it's anxiety, go home and, you know, or go to a therapist or whatever. And so I spent a lot of time in frustration on seeing doctors like that. And then once I got the diagnosis, I could at least be a little bit more clear in what I was looking for. I was actually kind of happy because I thought that after about 15 years of doctors telling me that I'm hysterical or crazy or you know not believing me, basically I thought, oh good, now they have a name for it, which means they have a treatment for it. But um, turns out not really the case. Um, it's fairly rare, so not a lot of doctors know about it. And what they do know about it is usually condensed to about an hour of training in medical school. <laughs> I saw a lot of just Terrible, terrible, terrible doctors. Just, I've been screamed at in doctor's offices. I've, you know, they haven't believed me that I have this condition, even though it was diagnosed by Mayo Clinic. Like, they just tell me to deal with it. You know, they're like, well, this is what you're gonna have for the rest of your life, so just learn how to manage the pain and good luck and that, you know. Most of the time when I go into doctor's appointments, if I don't leave crying, then that's like, a decent doctor appointment. If I leave crying, it's like a regular one. My, my part-time job is taking various pills and medications. This is Monty. Um, he's my buddy and my service dog and my hero. And he helps me. Um, he has a harness that he wears that I can use to help stabilize me so that my ankles and knees and hips don't um, sublux, which is like partial dislocation that he wears. And then a lot of times my ribs or my shoulder will kind of pop out and I, it's really hard to like bend over and pick stuff up. And so he will pick stuff up for me. He um, braces me. He's a medical alert dog too. So he alerts me um, before I have like the pot symptoms. I have POTS, uh, 
postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. <laughs> Another symptom of Ehlers-Danlos is brain fog, which is, means that you can't think of things that you want to say all the time. Um, it's easily in the hundreds of thousands of dollars with the medications and the doctor visits and the everything like that. Um, I've had to pay for plenty of stuff out of pocket on my own to, I mean, even just getting there, parking, you know, stuff like that, obviously, um, loss of work, loss of free time. Um, taking my second, my first, no, my first dose of pain meds for the day, my second dose of anxiety meds, um, and then some good old-fashioned acetaminophen, because that's the generic name and not the brand name. I was talking to somebody who had just gotten diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos, I would tell them to take a breath, <laughs> um, to find an empathetic doctor, make sure that they're willing to try untraditional things with you because with Ehlers-Danlos, paradoxical reactions to medications, to treatments are very, very, very common and a doctor that doesn't believe you when you say, hey, this, made, this treatment made me feel like this, they'll say, well, that's never happened before and then they'll blow it up but a good doctor will believe you and they'll say, okay, well, let's try something else then. So a compassionate, flexible doctor. Um, chiropractic has been amazing to put me back together and to kind of keep me together for the most part. Um, mindfulness and meditation, if you can get a really good practice down, whether it's five minutes a day or five hours a day or anything in between is amazingly helpful because it's just as much in your head as much as it is in your body because those two things are connected. <laughs> the biggest thing I think that happens with chronic illness is that you end up having to cancel plans a lot because you don't feel well or you know People might start to see you as like flaky or unreliable or that you don't want to hang out with them or go do stuff, but that's not the case at all. And what kind of starts happening is you can't hang out, so then people stop inviting you to things, and then that sucks a lot. Because, yeah, it's not really easy to have a friend or family member with a chronic illness. I'm really grateful that I started doing improv because I've made a lot of friends there who are very understanding and understand my limits, but also motivate me to like push me on them in a safe, healthy way, you know. Um, my mom and my stepdad are artists and they do a lot of like portrait painting. And so they had wanted to do a portrait of me for a while and we never, on the time until pretty like just a few months ago um they we sat down and they made these two pretty cool portraits of me which i still feel weird about having behind me but <laughs> as far as support systems i have found that they're very important and you kind of learn who you can count on real quick when you uh figure out that you have a chronic illness. Um, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm really grateful for the friends and for the, the family members that I've had that have kind of stuck around and stuck with me through everything, good and bad.